If you were going to make parts for a track day car, just like this one, what tooling supplier would you use? Well, we're here at Alitec to find out why they've chose Ceratizit. So, Darren, everybody's seen the Lotus from the intro. How much of that have you actually machined yourself? Um, I think the Lotus badge is original. Other than that, it's pretty much all custom now. Now, obviously, to machine something like that, you've got to have trust in the performance of the tools you're using. So, talk me through Ceratizit and how you guys have become more of a partnership more than a sell and buy. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's not too different from the things we do for customers. Stuff on the car is made to a very high level, so yeah, we need the decent tooling to do it, um, especially some of the more specialised things like long gun drills, that type of tooling really. Now, you don't just buy off it you actually have a partnership with Nev to see if you can push the tools harder than he tells you to. So, talk me through that. Yeah, so it's kind of an unofficial uh, competition, I think. Um, we'll usually have a go. If, if, yeah, it's more like a competition for me personally. If Nev gives me a number, I've got to try and beat it. And He's do laughing you... off camera now, look. <laughs> now, I know Nev. I'm guessing he gives you quite a target to hit as well. So it's not just going to be book speeds and feeds. No, I mean, part of it, I think we were discussing earlier, part of it is the machines. You know, we know that the machines are more than capable to do what he's asked me to do with the tools. Probably more so than what he asked me. Hence, we'll try and push it up as hard as we possibly can. Now, talk me a bit through the machines you've got and this one we're actually stood in front of. Okay, so as we've grown as a company, you know, we start with like probably entry level machines. As we've got into five axis, we very quickly realized you get what you pay for. Um, we haven't really looked back since we brought our first Hermley, I think five years ago. So we've currently got four, including one automated, and we've got a fifth Hermley automation cell on order, which will be landing with us in October. So what is it about the Hermley machines that give you the confidence to push these tools to, let's call it nearly breaking point? I think one of Hermes' biggest selling points is the resin base. Um, from a vibration point of view, they are absolutely fantastic. The fully supported gantry, the way the spindle's held. Um, yeah, rigidity-wise, we just don't see problems, even on hardened steels and things like that. Uh, and accuracy, I think they take some beating. You know, like we, we never have concerns about putting parts in and having to really chase stuff in. It's normally spot on first time. Because you don't normally see these types of machines in a job shop. They're normally in your big companies like Rolls Royce. So where did you hear, hear about these? Because obviously, if you're pushing tools to the limit, you need a machine that's going to be there with you right till the very end. Sure. We heard from them, a guy I used to work with actually, he used to run one at an F1 team, um, did a bit of research. When we first started looking at them, it is, it is probably scary for a small job shop. They're not cheap machines, but again, the argument is you get what you pay for. So certainly the first one we brought, it was a, a bit of a deep breath, but <laughs> I think we're proof in the pudding that you don't look back. If you buy something and it's good and it works and it does the job really, really well, it's quite easy to you know remember if you get problems on a machine, but if you don't, just move forward a bit. And yeah, they've been absolutely fantastic. Now, obviously, Alitech, I'm guessing here, but that started with a lot of aluminium. But you don't just do aluminium anymore, you do a full range of materials. Yeah. So what's it been like having Nev and that support to help you through when you've had problems? Yeah, uh, it's kind of an ongoing joke the last couple of years <laughs> we should change the company name from Alitech. Um, yeah, we have got on board with a lot of teams in the last couple of years. We are doing a lot more, I mean, for example, our C22 pallet loader Hermley. I think over the winter that did four and a half months straight cutting nothing but titanium. Um, big learning curve for us, but yeah, Ned's been fantastic recommending the tools. We got dialed in off ease and speeds pretty quickly. We're getting really good tool life out of those tools as well. Again, beyond what Nev said we should be seeing. So yeah, can't be more happy really. Now obviously we don't want to go into price point, but you said something earlier that, that I really liked is that you will sacrifice a tool longevity-wise if you're going to get the cycle time down because of the speed of that tool. Yeah. Now, obviously, that's not normally a way managing directors think. It's normally more about how much money can I save? 
it might be the type of business we're in. Obviously, we're motorsport. A lot of F1 parts are usually required, you know, sometimes 24 hours or less. So we're always looking at the bottom line. A machine hourly rate is more than the cost of the tools you would normally use to cut those parts. So it's simple maths, you know. If we're going to blow out two tools in an hour, but the part takes half an hour instead of an hour and a half, it's a simple equation, really. And it's just, it's such a refreshing way of thinking about it. And talking about running 24 hours a day, obviously you're here late, you're here weekends. Yeah. And tools break. We all know tools break. Yeah. If you break a tool on a weekend, there's no support there because people are on it. So you've invested in a vending machine. So what's that been like for you as a business? Yeah, game changing. Um, we keep going back to the titanium work we've been doing, but that's the prime example, you know. We'll be running automated, we've got an 18 cell pallet there. We might have five or six sister tools for each tool in that job. Um, even if we try and pre-order on what we think we're going to need, sometimes stuff doesn't work out the way you think. You might blow out more tools than you're expecting. The vending machine is there basically as our safety net and we have used it many, many times already over a weekend. Um, yeah. Now obviously that's dealing with the tool inside of it. Now, I'm going to ask you a bit of a controversial question. You're running uh, Centro P. Yeah. A lot of people say you can't rough with a Centro P or with an ER32 at all. Okay. Now, my personal experience is you can and you can be quite reckless with one. But you've actually took the next step. So tell me about the Weldon Lock college you're using to stop pull out. Okay. So. Traditionally, two factors when you're looking at roughing a job, it's either can the spindle turn the tool, will the tool take it before it snaps in half. We found the limits on both of those. We were pushing so hard that the third concern that arose was where you're literally pulling the tool out of the collet. Centro P's are fantastic, but when you're leaning on them as hard as we do, even those you can pull them out. So never recommended the Weldon Shank collets. Fantastic, drops straight into a Centro P, locks onto that Weldon shank, and we've achieved some pretty ludicrous numbers on how hard we're roughing jobs. Never had a problem, never pulled us all out. And it's not just Centro P's you use, you have all their shrink fit as well. Yeah. So, how did the shrink fits help you? Because obviously, we can see behind one of the parts you're making, you've got some quite tight spots to get into. Yeah. So, does having the shrink fits help you achieve? making parts you maybe you couldn't get in with another conventional holder? 100%. I think as a company, we've always been known for taking on the more complex, maybe larger jobs that other shops might shy away from. We do an awful lot of things. You know, you've seen today things like engine blocks where without some of these really long series heat shrinks, you're just not going to get to it. Um, you know, I, I can show you some stuff in a bit of ludicrous angles and depths we've had tools in. And then obviously, you're with Service Is It now, you weren't always with Service Is It. You, you told me earlier you're about 95% now. Yeah. Is that, what's that transition been to move everything over to Service Is It? Because having them as a one-stop shop must always be really, really helpful for you. So how do you find ordering stuff? So like obviously the website, they've got the app. Is that easy for you? Is that easier just to get everything from one place? You don't have to, because obviously you've talked about in your industry, it's, it's you're on the go constantly. You don't have time to breathe. Yeah. So you don't have the time to look round, chase round. So is it just easy having everything from one company? Yeah, um, time is money, especially for myself or Ben. You know, we're here six, sometimes seven days a week in the busy seasons. We don't really have an hour or two to spend bringing up the company or trying to source stuff. The website and the app, it's just so easy for me to jump on normally two, three minutes, I've found one I want, I click buy, it's done, it's here in the next day. Now, just to finish off, we've seen the Lotus that you've built, yeah. and I think we just need to mention we are right on the edge of Silverstone. Yep. What's the future for Alitech like? Because obviously you're on the edge of Silverstone at the moment. Can you tell me about where you're planning to move? So, yeah, I mean, we are at break neck in the current building. Um, we cannot get another ounce of machinery in here. So we've almost been holding off for the last year or two to try and make a big leap because we're gonna we're gonna make a huge leap in the size of building. We're probably gonna go, I think it's knocking about five times the size of what we currently have. Um, 
and it will hopefully be in the very local area um, and a very nice new unit is the current plan.